Hello and welcome everyone back to our Burton Albion England DNA series. Yes, I did mention previously that I felt like we might need to change the tactic, at least in some form, to make it more, just a bit more progressive on the front foot, maybe less direct a little bit going forwards. And we started off the season a little bit indifferent. We lost the first game. I changed the tactic early on. We sort of tweaked a few things. And again, it goes back to that old problem, really, of like, if I don't have those two strikers available... I feel like we're in a real problem. So, so I've been trying to like scramble around and think about a way to try and get a system that has a one striker tactic almost, and then trying to accommodate Victor when he's fit still. So it's been really difficult. So this is the best I've come up with, really. The problem with this tactic, the way that it currently is, the huge problem with it is that Victor doesn't score at all on the right-hand side. So it's like, it's almost pointless playing him there, which does then leave us really John King and which really does bring up the opportunity of just playing Tom King or somebody in there instead, which maybe that's a good thing. Do we get to move on off of Victor early on? He's only 28. He's got plenty of years left in him. Uh, it just feels not quite right because he's, you know, he's such a good player. He's one of our best players, I would say still. I still feel like that we should be playing him, but uh, I might take him out this game, you know. Although if I was to put Tom King in there now... It doesn't leave us an awful lot on the bench, considering that Kieran Gilligan's going to have to play this game because the injury hits of Brendan Hughes. What are we going to do? So we're going to play a game first, then we're going to review the attributes, and then we're going to play the second game after that. So we'll just do that early on there. Apart from that, maybe Tom Hinder comes up for this one as well. The results have been, yeah, a bit indifferent. I feel like we might have just sort of recovered it with a few tweaks into this game going forwards now into the Preston one here, but we'll see how we'll see how things go. We had a nice little run of the tactic there going well for us. Little poor run here. We've sort of recovered potentially, maybe. We'll have to we'll have to wait and see, of course. The league table looks like this. We're right in it. You know, we're four points off the playoffs. We've still got an outside chance. It's really tight at the top, though. You've got three teams on 39. We're really nine points off the top still. Like, it's just really close up there with multiple different teams up there. Everybody beats everybody. So, four points is pretty doable pretty quickly. So, yeah. But we, we need to try and get some wins regularly under our belts here. And we've got a few good sides coming up, which isn't great. But uh, yeah, let's get into the episode anyway. Let's get into the games first and let's review the attributes after after that. Mitchell King did have a few offers and I rejected all of them, to be honest. And he got he got quite upset with me at the end of the... Uh, I don't know if I showed it to you in the last episode. That's going that's getting off anyway. Yeah, but he uh, he's under contract for a few years. He actually wants to leave, but he's got four years left on his contract. So the rest of this season plus three more... So he's not really in danger of leaving just yet, but he could be somebody that just refuses to sign with us. We don't get promoted anyway in the next few years. So that's something to watch out for. That's plenty of time to go, isn't it? Apart from that, everybody else is fine in terms of uh, player ratings. Let's look at average ratings here. Like, it does seem like that Samu's that the whole season. It is, isn't it? Yeah. Samu's been pretty good in the last few matches and across the whole season. If we do look at the average ratings for the whole season there, Mitchell King's slightly higher than what he has been previous years. A lot of players have gone up in the average range, despite the fact the results have gone backwards. So you can see that it was holding us back a little bit. Only Victor really is the exception to that, I would say. But he is playing a different role completely. So that's that's why. But let's get to it then. Let's see how we get on. And we play Preston away. Preston are going to be near the relegation zone. So we would expect to win this if this tactic is going to work for us. In fact, both these fullbacks are a bit tired, to be honest. I could play Caledon right back, maybe. In the back four, it seems a little risky. Can we go Justin Parker Trot? Probably a bit risky as well. Uh, oh, we'll have to go with it. Justin Parker Trot can play in there. In a back four. Why not? Assistant manager says, pick up what he left off. Okay. And we are underway. Early corner here for, for Preston. It's going to be whipped in towards the near post. It's going to be headed away. Goes back out. They're going to get the shot in. Harrison spills it. It's cleared away. Absolutely nothing has happened so far in this game for us. Okay, well, so every time to dig in. Now, the problem is, right, the whole point of going to this was trying not to rely on a two-striker system. We could not have two good strikers at one point. But at the same time here, I think when you play this kind of system, you sort of need attacking wing backs. I probably would want something like maybe, maybe go like this. And then you'd have like maybe slightly more attacking wing backs on the, uh, maybe go for back attack. And we wing back attack this side. So then cause they're going to narrow the pitch a little bit and then that's where your width is going to come from so we could give us something like that maybe but that doesn't really help us in terms of like i suppose this side the right hand side you just need somebody who gets forward they don't need to be beating players they just need to whip crosses in something like that right but let's see how this goes in the second half right as a first highlight of the second half they go along from a goal kick we fail to win it in the air they're going to build their attack against us they're going behind are we going to deal with this 
We might do an amateur king wins the ball, gives it to Victor, to Justin Bucker Trot, to Heller, into Taylor. That was a pretty risky pass, really. As a shot from distance, it's not that far, really. Lackin plays into Gilligan, back into Lackin. He has options on the left-hand side. Goes back to Sam Hughes. Sam Hughes plays to Heller, into Lackin. We need a bit like of a movement down the left-hand side there from Powell. He's not really moved. He gets the ball now, though. Looks to cut it back to Lackin. He's got options, plays it to the edge of the area. Sam Heller's going to shoot from distance, and the keeper saves it. Going to take off Victor, I think, and throw on Keller Dunn is the right sort of like 10 position. We're going to miss out on the header there. They're going to break through. They've got plenty of time on this. Powell makes a good interception, but it's going to be put in anyway. Lackin wins his header. Taylor, are we going to win this? Hughes. We've got so many players in here. Surely one of you's got to win that. Tackle goes from, uh, from, uh, from Taylor. Now King, oh, he's been tackled. He's won it back, though. He has won it back. He's going to go away with it. And is he going to do something with it? He plays it to Keller Dunn. He's got options in the middle. Into Taylor, back into Justin Parker Trot. He's got options on the left hand side, goes through himself, shoots from distance. We're not really creating good chances, are we? Okay, I've just tweaked it to like a 4 2 3 1, see how that goes in there. I'll make some changes with it as well, I think. Let's throw on. Let's put Terry Taylor to a defensive role. Let's put Joe Powell to the middle, Keller Dunn to the left. In fact, no, let's put Tom Keenan to the left. And that'll probably do for now. Mitchell King's struggling. Let's take off Justin Parker Trot and throw on Hamer, who's not fully fit, but fitter than him at this point. Highlight for Preston, they're going behind. And it's from free kick. It's going to be headed towards goal. It hits the bar. It's going to be cleared away. No, it's going to go for a goal kick. Free kick here on the edge from... Who's it going to be? It's going to be Powell. It's pretty close to the goal. If he gets it over the wall, he's got a chance. Left footers don't often score from this angle. And he's at the post. It was close. Yeah, when I say that, I mean in FM. They don't seem to score that from that angle that often. Obviously, in real life, that'd be a great angle to score from, from a left footer. But it's going to be a corner in today. Last... Probably highlight of the game. The way this game's going, this is almost definitely the last highlight. Nothing's happened in this game. It's nice to know that we can compete and have these boring games where we're really a proper championship team now because we've not played that well. But we're able to just compete and make it a nothing game. There's another highlight. There's one more. Not even added time just yet, I suppose, either. Lacking goes wide left. It's going to be a red card for them. So we can go for this now. Just going all out attack. Make it as attacking as we can for the, for the added time. Instant highlight. Lacking in the box. Keller done heads it. Just wide. Corner for them last second. Oh, don't lose to this. Surely not. Headed towards... Oh, is it going to be cleared? It's going to wait now. Surely if we get to this. Shot from distance. Deflected. It's in. It's an own goal. It's a 1-0 defeat. I don't believe it. To 10 then. Bloody Preston. That is annoying. Oh, I'm going to have a go at them. I don't care. Thrash arms are far from pleased. They're a poor team anyway. We played poorly. And then we lost a 10-man Preston at the end of it. I'm not happy with that. No massive changes from Aled Harrison last six months. He has generally improved as a goalkeeper and has played a lot better in matches more consistently. I think he's getting just about good enough to compete and not make too many mistakes, which is which is good, obviously, for us. Mitchell King still improving uh, over the last six months. Nothing as a, as a plus one necessarily just yet, but looking really, really good. Attracting a lot of interest from big clubs now as well. Matt Hudson, a couple of plus ones for him. Uh, one thing I forgot to mention, actually, that this year, this time around, I don't know if I mentioned it last episode, actually, that I actually did four weeks of preseason of like just fitness and before I actually started the whole the whole schedule I think I did mention that last episode actually I picked up a few more injuries this time around I feel like than, than before but it could just be coincidence and a bit of luck really but but there we are and last but not least definitely not least Kyle Andrew now Kyle Andrews had a really big uptake in his attributes now he looks like he could be almost a center back for us next season like he looks really really good he is currently 18 years old, so he's almost ready, I think, to be moved up to the first team squad, if we think he's going to be ready. He is, he's tall, isn't he? He's 6'5". Six, six so he's 6'5". He's got enough pace to compete, and I think he's actually quite good. In fact, he's not going to be too far from Mitchell King if he was continuing that sort of trajectory. Maybe he needs game time. In fact, him and Hudson, I probably prefer him to Hudson at the moment. It's definitely close. It's really awkward because I'm not sure what suits us best at the moment. Because we don't really have a left back or a left wing back to, to do one or the other. Like, it might be worth moving like a Joe Powell to wing back. I'm not sure. It's really difficult, you know. I mean, going back to the original tactic, we could do something like that and have him as an inverted player so he goes inside. It leaves a lack of width on the outside on the left. Uh, we could maybe, maybe go wide centre back. We've got to be left foot centre backs though either. So, but he'll start off wide, then he'll go central late. But, like, just the kind of players that we have there, that would suit them better. What we're going to try is this. So, we're going to try... Maybe we could go maybe attack him fielder here or something instead of Shadow Striker. But we're going to try this system where we're going to have... It's going to be very similar to the Manchester City team in 2011-2012 where they had like David Silva one side, something else. We have the sort of two number 10s that are wide, but they come inside towards the middle to make like two 10s. And then you have like... You can either have two strikers. You can have it like this, almost like with two strikers up there. Or you can have it with one offset down. So I'm thinking that we move one down. And it could even be that we just put them there. I'm not too sure how to do it yet, but this is going to be roughly the sort of system I'm going to go with. 
So they're going to sit like a three, basically. They've both got sit now or a room position on the two the two tens. And then you've got two pivot players that allow them the two wing backs to go high and wide. Now, the right-hand side one's going to be slightly more defensive in terms of like a deep line playmaker who's going to probably go a little higher than this one, but not too much. They're going to sat, be sat behind the, the player a little bit. Two like proper pivots. But then he's going to get forwards. But he hasn't got any real instruction to beat players, right? He's just going to be up there. And if he gets in the wide area, he can start swinging crosses in. A bit like a... You know, the Zabaleta and Michael Richards kind of roll right, whereas the more creative ones going on the left. But again, we're not really looking for them to run at the players and do too much because they're playmakers both there. They should look to pass the ball and look to link off there. So they shouldn't really be too often having to dribble with it all themselves. It should be that they're playing it ahead of them and the, the patient build-up play then gets played here and they're like overlapping for like first time crosses whipped across the face of goal. It's not like wide crosses sticking it to the back post. We've got whip crosses on, of course. But what's up, plays? For those of you that followed my Albion Rovers streams, you would have seen that we did something very similar to this, but it was actually with two strikers. But I'm going to try and make this into a two, so a single striker system really as well, because that's really what we're looking for in this team is we're trying to find out a way where we can compete with a good team, but can we do it with potentially a one striker system to stop us having to do that sort of thing right? But let's play Victor as a shadow striker behind King. It's almost like a, it's like a proper second striker role. And we'll go through all that then in a second against Ipswich. In fact, let's come back in a couple of days when we know who's actually fit for the game. Okay, the team's pretty fit. So we're going to play this team for this game. It's going to be Harrison in goal with Lackin, Hughes, King and Keller done across the back. Taylor and Heller pivots with Powell and King in wide. Victor playing off of John King. Again, I just remembered that I've actually, I've probably covered some of the physical stats for some of the player reviews. To be honest, in this review, there weren't many anyway in the physicals. You haven't actually missed anything, although I was covering it. You didn't miss anything. So there you are. Apologies for that, though. As the manager says, recent praise is justified okay. We're going to watch this in slightly more highlights to see how the tactic's playing out for us. It's really to see how these two uh, sort of link up. They sort of move like a two up front at times. Like when it goes deeper, they set as like a one and one. But now you can see almost, they almost go like to a four four two, which is sort of what we want. But they're, well, they're a bit close together there. I guess the thing is, we want Vic to sort of be a threat in behind more than King. So it's, well, they've actually completely switched around here. That's interesting. Victor, oh, we try to force him behind there a little bit. Corner, power whips it in. Goes towards the near post for Hughes, headed away. Lacking gets to it. Victor shoots, deflects. It's going to be another corner. Keller done with the throne. Throws it into... Oh, it's a penalty! He's, he's taking it. Oh, it's a good penalty for, uh, for Joe Powell to take. Is he going to score it? The answer is yes, 1-0. Okay, not an absolute load of highlights in that game. So let's, uh, let's move... Let's try this. Let's offset him. So... We know what... Do we do that? Maybe we could do that. Let's see how that plays. Killian has it. Let's just see where they go. So Victor's now here. He's got all this space to run into. Let's make the run. He does a bit late. Tried to get into Killian, but we lost it. Win it back. Keller into Keller done. Into Taylor. Taylor's got options. Oh, he's giving it away. That's really poor. Powell's going to get to it, though, as he does. Victor doesn't quite get that. Does now. Goes through. He's going to score. 2-0. Bit scrappy, but it is a goal. Hold on here. They build up their attack. They go sort of in behind there. Taylor wins it. Plays it to King. To Victor. Victor, oh, it's a red card for them. Disgraceful referee, send him off. On that note, make loads of changes it. Highlight for them, they throw the ball in. They go in behind. Hudson's gone for Mitchell King here. Plays into Keller Dunn. Got basically two wingers, at, two League One wingers at fullback here for us. Keller Dunn and Smith. Powell plays it into Victor's a pretty poor pass. That seems to be a recurring theme. He sort of gets inside and tries to play through to Victor. Victor's too deep to really make that like run count. So we have to probably watch for. A fizz passed in there from McGilligan. Goes out to Powell. Up to Victor, edge of the area. Heller's going to recover it. Into Victor. Gets it to Keller Dunn. Tries to go around. The player has to go back now to Hudson. Good retaining of the ball there. This looks a lot better. It looks more controlled from us. Gilligan plays it through. Is he offside? The first player I think he is going to be offside. But a good little move. Keller Dunn travels with it. He loses it. See, that's what we don't really want to see from the fullback really there. So I might take... If I run at defence, I might take that off. Just so that they don't keep doing that. In that situation there. They go in behind them. Ipswich might get a goal. Cross towards it. Oh, good save from the keeper. Throw in here. Smith throws it to Gilligan. Back to Smith. Whips in across. It's deflected up. King wins a flick on. It's going to go to their goalkeeper. So they're going to progress the last highlight. Maybe not the last highlight of the game. It depends, I suppose. But if we score, it might just kill off the game. If they score, it could make it potentially interesting. it would be two games in a row that we've uh, played against 10 men. Although it was really for the only the last five minutes of the last game, of course. Hudson. Powell. See, I don't think he needs to really drop into the back line as much as he's trying to there. Uh, played it behind the King. He's through on goal. He's surely got a score there, hasn't he, King? Ah, oh, what was that for an effort? 
I drop it to balance mentality just to like take the intensity out of the tactic to prevent injuries and tiredness really when the game's pretty much over. Or it should be over anyway. Gilligan gets it, plays it. Oh, what a ball that is. That is an unbelievable pass from Gilligan to Justin Parker Trot. What a goal that is. Round of applause, boys. 3-0. This looks more like the England DNA we were looking for. This is good. Stay on the ball. Lots of nice progressive passes. What a three ball bat is, by the way. Delicious. What a finish. 3-0. And they have it 3-0 win. So we lose away win at home. That's pretty much how the season's gone. The game was, that might be tough. We just drop points in. The games we expect to win, we do win. That's the story of our season so far. There you are. So not too much really to learn. We're sort of like a, yeah, again, another team that's sort of outside the playoffs, trying to get ourselves in. Obviously, last year we were like top of the league at this point, but we've had a big drop off. It's a new match changing. Like this time last year, I'm not sure if we were even still playing on the, the pre-winter update at this point. I can't remember. It was close though. So it's completely different anyway. And and we also started to try and blood more youngsters in. We've made a conscious effort trying to do that. So that's always going to have a slight dip in results, but we're still, we're still there. Even though we've now got Aled Harrison, Mitchell King, Sam Heller, as and John King, those, those four absolute certainties in the starting eleven now, and then quite often you're also seeing Tom Keenan's had six starts this year. Justin Parker Trotts had eleven starts this year. Hudson's had six. Like we're seeing a lot more starts from the other players in our in our academy as well. So that's good to see, isn't it? But that is going to do it. So that's going to do the episode. We'll move on in the next one and come back for Hollis City and Wickham with another little attribute review at that point so we've been getting on. A bad run of form could leave us in lower mid-table, potentially a relegation fight. A good run of form puts us into the playoffs, maybe challenging to the title at a really big push. And if we stay where we are, we're going to always probably be that just outside the playoffs. Yeah, there's a chance, but not really sort of scenario, which is what we're in pretty much, pretty much at the moment anyway. But that's going to do it. Thank you so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed the series, and I'll see you, of course, next time.